Hello. What's up? Ladies and gents, boys and girls, my next guest hails from Deer Lake, Newfoundland, and played a dozen years in the NHL with the Rangers, Hurricanes, Canucks, Habs, and Devils. He amassed over 1,200 penalty minutes during that period and also tucked home 16 goals in the best league on earth before coming back home and winning a couple of provincial herder championships with his hometown Deer Lake Red Wings. These days, he still calls Western Newfoundland home, coaches senior hockey, runs a bar, raises a family, and continues to play charity games with the NHL alumni teams across Canada. He is a poised pugilist, a powerful player, a wild winger, a radical ranger, a noble Newfoundlander. When push came to shove, he'd be dropping the gloves. He played against the Jets, and his teammate was Gretz. He got a chance to play and fought Probert right away. He scored seven his first year and likes to drink beer. He's got a fine set of abs and played for the Habs. Uh, I like to make rhymes, and we fought a couple times. He has a nice car and also runs a bar. He's pretty big and blocky, and it is underrated at hockey. He likes Labatt Blue and can score goals, too. Folks, on game days at home, the jerseys are hanging. Please welcome to the show, Deer Lake's own Darren Langdon. Darren, how the hell are you doing? All good, Terry. All good. So Them runs us, were pretty good, though. I don't think like I, I don't think I ever had abs, though. <laughs> I was gonna. I was wondering. I got a six pack now, but it's not six abs. one two zero oh, five. Is that what you played at? That's what hockey DB says. Yeah. Two oh five. There might be an ab or two. Yeah, but I probably was mostly two twenty. Yeah, and yeah. In I, Jersey, my last year, I was two thirty, so they kind of got rid of me. Really? Is that what happened? <laughs> um, so when you left. I know every origin story of guys that, for the most part, in and around our generation that played pro. I don't know. I, I, I see the Sherwood Park Kings, Summerside Capitals. I knew you played there. And for those that don't know, those are places in PEI. And so, uh, you know, to make that jump, you'd have to get on a plane and literally leave the island. So you must have had some sort of plan, did you? How'd you get there? Uh, not really. I think... Uh... Newfoundland was big in senior hockey back then, and one of the guys from PEI was playing with the Royals, and I was just playing senior around there at 17 or 18. I forget now what really? age, but uh, somebody see me uh, fight big Steve Dunn, I think, and got me yeah. up, uh, got me up uh, PEI. And from there, I played with Sherwood in the league, folk, kind of folk, the PEI league combined with the Maritime Junior Hockey League, which or the I don't know what the league was called then, but combined International that. Junior League. I never heard of it before until I did my yeah, homework so on your now staff. It's called the Maritime Junior Hockey League or something like that. So that's what happened. So my dad coached the Mount Pearl Senior Blades in the 80s, and one of the big guns they brought in was Steve Dunn from Cornerbrook, I believe. Yeah, uh, I think he is. Yeah, so you fought him at that young of an age. So you left as a fighter because I'm looking. No, no, but I think I was leading the – Yeah. Leading the league in scoring too, but uh, they anyway they thought they were getting a fighter because uh, the first practice I think one of their guys came up and fought me, but then I think I was I got maybe MVP the team, but still had four hundred penalty minutes, so I pretty well fought it in every game. I was gonna say okay, so you go up ninety ninety one. I don't get hit a lot, Terry. I'm not like you, so I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, I leave myself out there, as is known. You, you do. You're a, um, I guess you could say, could, could, it's not an insult to say a second-half fighter, right? You often tired guys out and then start going? Was that a plan? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, that's what it seemed like, but I was just, you know, waiting my turn. And uh, I, I I think I Ryan Vanderbush was a buddy of mine. I said, Ryan, I don't fight like you. And uh, you've seen Ryan Vanderbush fight. I don't know if you play with him, but he I trolls did. him I hard. Did. I fought him and, and I saw him fight you down to the stadium. Or fight oh, you that was a really good fight, yeah. That was yeah, bad my mother. Before. I think my mother was drunk. She had, I was trying to sneak her a pair of New York Ranger pants, and she came down to the dressing room with them on. Oh, really? But anyway, <laughs> I kind of got in trouble with the pants, but they let her keep them. <laughs> Man, that's one of my first. Mer so I was away. That that was, I guess, early nineties. Obviously, it had to be. But I was I was away. Something happened. I was injured or something. I came back here to get surgery. I went down. For those that don't know, the St. John's Maple Leafs had just come on the scene. We got Toronto's farm team here. It was big news. And Langer, I guess, I guess I'll get to that. So you're 
you know, you because you were with Dayton, get brought up to Binghamton, who are affiliated, and almost like within three years, you're in the NHL from junior. So, what happened in 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 those two years, 1991, 91, 92? You had great years in Summerside, uh, but did you were you invited to camp or did you no, come back? Yeah, home? I think the same thing everywhere. Somebody wanted me to go down and try out the East Coast League, but uh, I don't think I don't even I didn't have an agent or nothing, and. Uh, Somebody got me, said, nah, I'll get you a try uh, IHL team if you come down Dayton for a try And Anyway, I said, yes, I'll try it. Anyway, the way it goes, you're not a good skater. You're not supposed to be scoring. You're, like, I don't look yeah. good in practice. Yeah. And, you know, I knew it. I knew, like, I knew they didn't really like me there. Anyway, the first game in Dayton when I got sent down, the first game I didn't play the, I didn't play the first game. I, I was a uh, healthy scratch. Anyway, our tough guy got hurt. The, I think the next game I play, got a goal, assist. I can't remember, but I got in a big fight with one of the toughest guys in the league and done pretty well. The rest, uh, coach Claude Noel, which coached in the NHL, yeah. uh, never sought me again, and he kind of snuck me some money every now and then. Maybe it just, like, I don't pay you very much. Here's some money to go get McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is the and, way the anyway. They just thought I wasn't going to be no uh, any good, and uh, you know, I turned out to be half decent in the uh, East Coast League, and you know, uh, could hold my own in a fight. So, uh, so, and I think from that, I uh, Nicky Fatio, who I see in New York when I go back there, he said tells a story that he's the one that got me to the NHL because he's the one told Colin Campbell about me in the East Coast League because Nicky Fatio was a coach. Up Nashville or Knoxville, I forget now, but uh, tough guy in his own right. Yeah, uh, yeah, really. Colin Campbell had a great team in the AHL with, you know, Kovalev, Zuboff, uh, guys like that. They had 60 win, like record wins. Anyway, they needed a tough guy, and that's where I came in and got to play with some good guys. And uh, from that, Colin Campbell went to, you know, from there went to coach, assistant coach, New York, then coach, and uh, – he kind of liked the Newfie guy and uh, kind of took me along with him. Dayton. I mean, Dayton, 54 games, oh, nice, played, nice 45 story. points, 429 minutes. Those were just crazy days that that would even be possible. 429 minutes. So are you telling me that with all those penalty minutes, you didn't, that none of that was really planned? Did it just play out that way? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how uh, penalty minutes worked back then, but at the end of the game, I, I can't remember the East Coast League either, but uh, in terms of what the penalties were, but then again, I was scoring goals and getting a few points, and you know, I was a checker and everything, so I didn't want to get kicked out early in the game ever. So, yeah, I kind of left it till the end of the game. Now, maybe I got a 10 minute misconduct in the game, misconduct. I, I can't remember how it works, but I'm thinking if it was like the AHL and NHL back then, you were allowed a couple fights for sure, but. I don't think I fought twice too many times in my uh, career. Once is enough. And you just happened, so for those from Newfoundland or familiar with the pro hockey players from here, Darren, I'm I'm talking to you guys from the East Coast of Newfoundland, St. John's. Langer's probably six-hour drive away from me in Deer Lake. Well, out on that same coast, there's a guy, Darren Coburn. He's a, he's a lead. I think yes, he's and he was with me in Dayton. The, the he's one of the all-time team. leading scorers in the coast. I, I believe yeah. he's in the Hall of Fame. So yeah. he happened to be in Dayton. When you're there, I mean, that's a familiarity that probably there wasn't a lot of pro players back then from Newfoundland. There's not a lot now, no. but then there was none. Yeah, no, exactly. And uh, you know, Coburn, like you said, was, was one of the all-time greats in the East Coast League, and he could score goals. So uh, it was good. Uh, you know, I I haven't been uh, down in the states before that. It was nice to uh, Coburn to uh, you know help me along for sure. So now, at what point? So when you're in Summerside, are you thinking NHL is a possibility? Because you go, you only spend a small time just over a year in the coast. Now you're right up to the AHL, which usually is kind of hard to make that step. But now you're getting in, you're fighting a bit, and you get up 94, 95. Yeah. You get up to the NHL. What point yeah, did the I'm Rangers just, sign? I'm just, it? I'm just looking to you. Like, uh, I watch on TSN or Sportsnet, and I see people with their shit in the back background and uh, – all that, like you got stuff. I just noticed myself in the background. I didn't try this either. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you just got you just got your jersey retired in Deer Lake. Yeah, I just noticed in the background. I got a picture of me and a hockey card of me. And 
That's why you look set up. This looks like a professional setup. Yeah, look, I, I do this I all the time on two or three different podcasts regularly. And look, I got Christmas lights up in the back. Yeah, <laughs> you have some hockey cards. Good to say you're a Christmas, but that's the way you are. But like I said, I just came from the garage with my phone, going to do it on my phone. I said, oh, I'll sit here and do it. And I realized the stuff in the back. Like, I looks like a pro. It does, actually. You might get some calls from here, maybe do yeah, some. Uh... Yeah. I can see the goalies. Like, everyone got the goalies on TSA and the sports, and they got their goalie mask here, and they got no, and they got yeah. Gretzky scoring on them, or them saving. It's but... this huge setup, and I just, I'm like, people, most people are listening. But honestly, most, nine-tenths of the audience here are just going to listen to it over audio anyway. Yeah. And I've never yeah. heard anybody complain, hey, Terry, you know, why is John Lennon in the background? I mean, would it really make a difference if I had a hockey stick up there? Maybe so, maybe yeah. so. Anyway, I forget the question you asked. Now, well, you I just it? like, at what point did you sign with the Rangers? You're there. You're having a great – I mean, the Coast, any year in the minors, we get almost a point a game and over 400 penalty minutes. I mean, obviously, you had eyes on you. So at what point did you sign with the Rangers? Yeah, I guess I I, was, I think now I signed with Bimington or Bingington, whatever, yeah. whatever you say it. I have trouble saying it. But uh, to I, AHL contract, I'm not sure how it worked there, but I think the next year I signed with uh, Rangers on a couple of year contract. And I think my base salary, if I made the NHL in, was like 180200 I I can't remember. That was like said 93 or so. But yeah. Uh, it so, went up a fair bit after that, the, the next collective, because you couldn't pay anyone that that little back after the new agreement. But uh, I got in right there after that. I, I got in there in the lockout year also. What's that? I got in there in the lockout year. I think 94, 95 was a yeah. lockout year. So I made the team because Coaster and yeah. a couple of the other tough guys, I forget now, Coaster. And anyway, I forget. Uh, but uh, he was injured, and I made the team at a camp because I had a couple good fights, and I don't know if I scored in the uh, exhibition, but a couple really good fights with Randy McKay, and Randy McKay played with Jersey. So the Ranger fans obviously loved that when I'd done good against him. And uh, anyway, there was a lockout, so they sent me down to the minors, and then when it started up in January, I think they had a couple, few bad showings, and they called me up, and I stayed there ever since to, to I got traded in 99. I think, yeah, when Gretzky left, I left. Um, I said, get out of town. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good time to get out of town. Was <laughs> Daniel Lacroix there? Were you battling with him? Uh, he was there, yeah, a bit. He was most, I don't know if he was in the minors, a bit more. And then he got traded, I think, to Philly or anyway. I played against him somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's... I know that. I, I hung it, was with him in the minors for a bit, too, uh, before we got both of us yeah. got to the NHL. So. I, know I just remember him going to the Rangers around there. I followed his. I don't know yeah. him that well. I, he was I a tough little fella for. Uh, yeah, he was tough. Um, so you get up eighteen games played. It was only a forty game regular season that year. So it, yeah, forty or so, maybe forty. So you you, I mean, Scored was that a, first game. You made it. You score. I was going to say you get a goal and assist. So you was that no, your first? I got a goal, but I didn't really score it. Uh, Jeff Bukaboom shot it from the point and. Uh, they said it hit off me and went in. I went to Paul Stewart at center. I said, Paul, that didn't hit me. That's uh, and it was on Patrick Wah. I said, yeah, Paul, yeah. that didn't hit me. A ref, whatever. I, I'm not I, my first game in NHL. I'm not uh, you know first name basis with the ref or not. So I said, Mister Ref, or that didn't touch me. He said, Yes, it did, kid. I said, Okay. So wow, there no, really? Yeah, there were no big replays back then. But my yeah, first goal perfect. was not a goal, but it was against Patrick Wah. Fuck it. You scored. It's on. It's it's what did Buka Boom yeah. say? Did Buka Boom, was he upset? No, he didn't give a shit. Not at all? <laughs> he's not like he's a scorer. He didn't have goals in his bonus. No, no, he didn't. So then what happened 95, 96, seven goals? That's like yeah, for I don't know that ice time. I'm not, you know, that, that back then, tough guys, enforcers, whatever you want to say, often full games would go by, you get one shift, sometimes none. Yeah. So what, how did you, I mean, you must have played a little bit then. Yeah, I did. I like, I was uh, with Cole in there, I was like a third liner because he liked my toughness and, you know, four checks and that's the kind of coach he was. So, and with a lot of teams, is if the coach likes you and likes your style, you get to play. If they don't, like some people like finesse players and obviously most NHL is now finesse, but back when I was playing, I, you know, got a, a bit of ice time. And then when different coaches came in, I got less and less and then, you know, a few healthy scratches, but 
that's the way it started to go and fighting started to get less and less and uh, yeah but i managed to sneak 11 or 12 13 years out of it so i had a great time for sure you, yeah you did and so you're i mean those the meat of all that i remember you coming up with the rangers because where was i yeah i was out in tri-cities playing but it was big news we really other than slaney getting drafted i don't remember any newfoundlanders in the nhl in the 80s am i wrong there who had been in the NHL in the 80s? I, I mean, the 70s had Tony White. My dad played in the WHA. Donnie House, I guess, maybe snuck in in the early 80s. But I don't remember anybody in the late 80s in the NHL from Newfoundland. So Slaney gets drafted. It's a big thing. To be honest with you, I, I don't know. You kind of came out of nowhere. I knew Cobra yeah. before I knew you because I, I watched baseball in the summers. So you, you you're in New York for those years. I know that some of the earliest fights, we watch them on YouTube all the time. Bob Probert was, is, I mean, a lot of people would rate him number one for a lot of reasons. He certainly, during that area, era, for me, was known as one of the toughest, if not the toughest. So I see you fighting him on YouTube. How far into the career before you fought Probert? You fought him multiple times, right? Yeah, I, twice. So I know I fought him both times with the Rangers, I think. And yeah. So, I mean... That was uh, before 99, so uh, 98, I think, 98, 99. So I'd say for sure if it was Probert out there, I would have tried to fight him when I got the first chance. But back then, too, and the way the league went, I, I don't know which years, but sometimes you didn't play a team all year. So I might not have seen Probert. I, I, I can't remember. But uh, – for sure, I tried the first time I, I could because I, I liked that. I, I liked yeah. tough guys, and I knew he was one of the toughest. And, you know, I just wanted to try him, see how it worked out. That's uh, I survived. It's often how – yeah, you did well, man. That that first one is one of the best fights uh, of the era. So the, – and here's the thing. Connect these dots for me. Early – maybe mid-2000s, maybe, maybe even mid-2010. I remember going through – I was playing golf. I don't play golf much. But I was playing out west. Newfoundland went to Grand Falls. I was with a couple of buddies. We happened to stop into Deer Lake. Todd Harvey was there, Bob Probert. I think you guys were doing a hockey school. I hung out with him for a day or two. He seemed like a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, how did you guys know each other? Uh, I think the I, – I don't know how you're talking about Bob Probert here. Yeah. Not, uh, Probert. Yeah, I didn't he, expect he, he was in Newfoundland. I believe it was the summertime, if I'm not – No, I, I can't remember. I think it was a little bit yeah. – he was in, remember that uh, show called Rent-A-Goalie or rent -A Yeah. So Rent-A-Goalie, all the cast or the crew came to Deer Lake and had Probert as their main guy and had an exhibition game against Deer Lake and I got the play. And then Rent-A-Goalie went to Fort McMurray after that and they asked me to go along. So I hung up with Bob and so I got to know him that way more, uh, more oh, that's than anything else. And so... We kind of got to know each other over the week. We were at Fort Mac, and, uh, you know, a little bit after that, he passed away, which, you know, was sad. Real nice fella. Uh, almost. Uh, most tough guys are nice there. Yeah. It's true, you know. So. What, what do you think that is? I, I don't I, know. I mean, is, just, just the way you're brought up, most of us, you know, get uh, are pretty sensible. And now they, a lot of people say we're not sensible, we're crazy, or we're getting brain injuries or whatever, but. Uh, I had no issues, and uh, you know, I the well, only, I would I wouldn't change a thing. No, no, no. I, I think there's a mutual respect, guys. No, it's not an easy job, and it's funny you bring up the. I I only I had a few concussions, but it was only from getting hit going through the middle. Uh, I never. <laughs> Would you write it down? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got. I, I'm not saying I took a lot of punches. There's a difference between like getting. I remember Vandenbush. Jesus, did he have a hard punch? He hit me in Chicago. An exhibition, I went straight down. I had to be kind of talked into the box about where I was, but then the next day I was fine. It was, it was, it was. There's a difference between like knocked out and then post concussion. We got your head down coming through, and you hit like a Scott Stevens like hit. Yeah, you know that hurts. That yeah, that those ones, and I would yeah. leave some. I mean, when he could hurt a what, six, six, uh, ten, oh, three hundred pound Eric Lindros. Fuck, man, you were in that division with him and Danico. Surrey was there for a bit. I mean, they were yeah. known for just having big, hard. Colin White was there. Jeez, there's four on that team that were just hitters. Um, I mean, was that different to navigate against? Like, you go from junior to East Coast League to AHL to NHL. Like, so was the 
what was the biggest jump there? Well, the food started to get better. The pay was a little better, and uh, yeah. the hotels got better. So every every step of the way, everything got a little bit better. The uh, the coast yeah. people don't realize is just. I mean, I respect it. It's great, but it's almost like a, an extension of junior. You know, you're still on the bus having like fucking oh, yeah. and yeah. shit at times. I right? had to sneak the beers on the bus. I was the beer guy. <laughs> Ryan Power asked me to ask you how far, how long after a game before you cracked a beer? Uh, not long. They started. Uh, after the games, uh, they they started after a couple incidents uh, with you know people uh, getting in accidents after a game driving. They started to try to take it away a bit, so yeah, we had to sneak it a little bit sometimes. But uh, you know, we I remember managed. playing senior, and, and that was my job too. Like the the rink guys come in from the other team. I said, yeah, Messier wants a two four on the bus, or. Leach wants a two for on the bus, and they all pay them, but they all pay me back. Like we all, ah. we all chipped in and uh, paid the stick guy or whatever to sneak him on the back. Beauty. Um, so you go listen. You're in the Rangers. These are just some names. I didn't really look at all of them. It's just off. I know. I can't remember halftime either when they say oh, no. It's, it's this tough. Guy, you play every smart. year, and there's all different. Guys I was there with going. a shitload of superstars. I um, just, I just, like you're there, there's some guys with not all real, they're not all tough guys, but a lot of penalty minutes. So Eric Cairns is in New York when you're there. Uh, Buka Boom, um, Churla. In Churla. Churla, he was another underrated guy. Ulf Richie, Samuelson. Richie and Samuelson. Richie Peon, a nut. And Ulf fucking, Samuelson. <laughs> Ulf yeah. Samuelson. And Pat Verbeek. People forget, man. I was talking about Pat Verbeek at the rink the other day, and people are like, who are you talking about? I said, what? He's one of the fucking biggest pests of the area. Great player, too. Would always get points. But he got a lot of penalty minutes. He was one of those guys. He didn't fight much. Yeah, little short thought, guy. Stocky, but it like Yeah, like the fucking bull. clip you so that yeah. guys like you oh, would yeah. come in. Yeah. So you go through point, and I remember that, too, like the early 90s, the mid-90s, with each team had guys like there, – there, there's five guys there that had – you know, a full year would get 200 penalty minutes, right? 150, 200 for a joke. Um, but – now you go to Carolina. I looked at this. I was surprised. So you get 2000, 2001. There's only two people on the team with penalty minutes over 100 are Dave Carpa and Jeff O'Neill. Jeff O'Neill, who I don't think ever got in a fight. I mean, he'd play hard if he had to. And, uh, yeah. You know, but you know, oh, dog. He, he wasn't he's not fighting fight. much, no. No. And if he is the second leading penalty minute guy on your team, that change. And come to think of it, I've seen games in Carolina. I played one there. I. It's like I remember in the late '90s. Again, most of the time I was sat out, but I saw it. Um, Carolina, say, was a completely different field in Philadelphia. You had to really pack your lunch pail going into Philadelphia. Carolina always kind of got by on being fast, and so was that. But you didn't have to. I mean, uh, you yeah. Were so, so you're playing with uh, Paul Maurice, and some coaches, some coaches will. Not even put your fort line on for a shift, like. And I'm not a not saying I dislike Paul, or John Muckler did the same. And not just to me, but uh, oh yeah, to a lot, lot a, a lot of people I know that were good players and shouldn't be made to sit there on the bench uh, for a full game. And yes, I, I understood my role, but some people still on the fort line that you know had a good hockey career, he would sit them on the bench for a full game, and which. I didn't think it was right, and I, I think I had Leachy and Gretz and a couple of people go and step up for me a couple of times. I said Langer's playing good, man. You can't, uh, you know, I played good one game, and the next game you won't, you won't get a shift. He said you can't not give him a shift. Uh, Muckler didn't care, I don't think. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. It's, Paul Maurice done it those. similar, but I know there's a lot of pressure on him, and uh, you don't want to put the fourth line that get scored on either. And you just, I know, but yeah. sometimes Langer, I remember that happening to me in L.A. And it was five to one. And I after the game, I'm like, what? What the fuck would have been the p- hassle if I went out there with two minutes left? It's five to one. Yeah, game's over. Yeah, right. Well, uh, I, I, that said too, uh, like I said, if the, if I'm not out before that, pretty well, don't put me out either. Like you don't. They're I not going to tap mean. me on the back and say, and no coach ever did either tap me to go and fight because I kind of no, knew my role. Yeah, and I really I don't tell any my kids or whoever I coach to do that. And I don't believe in it. If, you know, if you don't know your role, you don't need to be told like, Darren, go and fight this guy. Totally, man. 
I mean, I, I don't really like people or coaches that do that. And I, and I said, I never had a coach that did that. So I only had maybe, one. and they knew they didn't have to tell me. I mean, if someone went and suckered Gretzky, which never happens or don't happen, if I don't no, jump up the bench, because you were there something. though. Yeah, it's a, exactly. a chicken or egg thing. You know, yeah. it, it didn't happen a lot then because stars were surrounded with guys that would do that. It's yes, fun now. now. Like, God, buddy, buddy made a nice check last night in yeah. the Edmonton game on, uh, uh, yeah, the Toronto guy made a nice check. And all of a sudden, you've got Rugen, uh, Nugent Hopkins up uh, fighting a guy. Just every time he gets a good hit, now someone got to go and fight. And they're, it's, it's and they're so not very good whack. fighters. It's so out of whack. It, yeah. It's it's the people They're are not very in. good fighters. I think you might even win a fight. Uh, who knows? Against Nuge, I think I'd have a chance. I'd just stand back, imagine. Imagine standing at some point. That's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> My dad often says he's like, you know, who knows? At least you played in the NHL. Because he's like, if you kept going, you leave yourself wide open. He goes, Tony Twist or something could have oh, broken yeah, your yeah. Tony Twist. A, I'll tell you a story about him. He just I only fought him once, but uh He's huge, like the pipes yeah. on him, and everyone knew he got that one punch, just like a Joey Coser. And yeah. uh, I was fighting him, and just pretty well on him off. He's on me off, and I said I couldn't add, think it to myself because yeah. I think a little bit during a fight. I don't think you do, but no, I don't. <laughs> But I said, I could nail him with a left there now because he's wide open, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. that goal, you got your right arm way back. Yeah. And I said, I could hit him with a left there now, and I said, if I try to swing with my left and I misses, he's going to yeah. knock me out with his right. And I want to have beers with the boys after the game, so I'm just going to just going to wait it out. We just had a little fight, and That's, I don't know, we fell down, but we went to the box, and every, everybody survived. It's funny how that works because um... – that's why, I mean, you're almost like a doctor at work. It's wild. A lot of fighters tell me that. I'm not trying to pump your tires. You know it. You, you, when I say second half fight, most people don't even last that long. But I remember looking at that sometimes, yeah, and because guys like that that had this big punch and they would almost leave it open, and there is a point that you can cling on and then you can let go with your left and hit a couple. I wasn't really good at it, but I yeah. keep people on it. But you got to realize that once you do it, I can do that. But I got to make sure I'm not getting yeah. back with the right. So a couple it's... times, right? Trevor Gillies hit me with one of those, and I was like, "What the?" F-? And I knew it. I thought just like you did. It's only a fraction of a second, but it does go through your head. Yeah. And I went, and it opened up his arm, and Jesus, did he hit me with the punch? It was one of the hardest <laughs> punches I've ever, ever ever been hit with. Yeah. Um. Okay, so Carolina. Now you're playing. You're playing. You go Carolina. Now you play for a few teams. You play for the Canucks the Habs, the uh, Jersey, and Carolina in for the next four or five years. And in 04, 05, come back home, play senior hockey. So was that, I believe, Jersey, like you said, was the last team, right? Yeah, and like I said, it was – I wouldn't play in a ton. Uh, and Lou just – Lou was good. He didn't want to send me down. And it was that time of the year you could call players up so you – there was no salary cap, but he just took me in. He said, Langer, you're here with your four kids and family. If you want to, if you want to go home early, uh, you can, you're probably not going to get, you're not going to get played. And we got too many players here and, uh, you know, you go home, I'll send you your paycheck and uh, nothing we said about it. I said, perfect. And I think they made it to the playoffs that year. I even got a playoff bonus. So it was good. Wow. I, you know, I appreciate that. He, he could have sent me down and yeah, hey. but, um, and, and that, the, uh, he sent down – so that year, I think he set down some big players, maybe McGillney and, like, he was crazy sending down players for some reason. But uh, Malakoff was there. I think he got sent down. I can't really remember now, but uh, anyway. Oh, Malakoff was there. Jesus, I was in Montreal with Malakoff when he uh, had to get – he was out with it. I, I'm not sure if he was there with me, Terry, but I heard that he got sent uh, – yeah, I can't really remember. But, yeah, something like that. He's a big guy, though. Well, he he was unbelievable. I couldn't believe how good he was, man. He just he yeah. never really worked at it. Well, uh, and a lot of them Russians are like that. Don't seem yeah, like weird. they're working like, at it. It would almost good. make me upset. I'm like, I'm clawing at the bit to get called up. I go into practice. He would leave early. <laughs> uh, you know, remember there was it was because in '94, '95, some new rules came in, and one of them was like, if if you want to leave the rink, you can leave, you can only be at the rink like three hours a day or something. Yeah. If, yeah. if you want it. And he's the only person I ever saw, actually. <laughs> like, as soon as that time was up and we were out there doing extra stuff, he was off. And I remember once, you can look this up for anybody listening. He 
he was out with a bad knee and he someone took photos of me now it'll be all over the place but he was on mount tromblon skiing skiing of all yes, things yes, yes. And he was out with a knee problem <laughs> anyway so i just always found that funny he his give a shit meter was so low that it was comical yeah um so then you come so did you know then the re- not only your NHL career is over, I don't. You didn't try to go to Europe or anything. No, and I know no. you love senior hockey, but still, it must no, have been. No, I know what type of player I am, and I know what type of game Europe is. And Europe got a big ice service, and the one we got now is big enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, hey. I'm not obviously. I I know my skating is not the greatest, and to play in Europe, you got to be a half decent skater. So, and so I you didn't, didn't. I didn't want to play anymore anyway. Come back didn't. here and frig around with senior for a bit and. And so for those that don't know, the provincial championship for senior hockey here is called the Herder, and it's one of the – it's uh, little known outside of Newfoundland, I think, but in Newfoundland it's a big, big-time trophy champion – or it's a big hockey trophy. Uh, they frequently – at the end of the year, it's sold out. In a few years there in the 2000s, we played at Mile One Center where the Growlers play now, Langer. You guys sold that out. Actually, um, we had some great battles too, the Royals versus the Red Wings. But anyway, did you – so you came back – did you do you have one herder or two? Mm, or three? Two, I think. Uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, first year maybe I was just a coach, I think, or a player coach. I can't remember now, but I think two, yeah. Did they talk you into playing or did you know you were gonna play? No, I figured I was gonna play, yeah. And what but I, they I had think- like there were some good players in that league too, because you had imports coming in from, you know, some good players coming in, you know, uh yeah, you know, top university players and top junior players from the Ontario League or Quebec. So it's not well, like last... you're jumping at Danny Chill and just going to fly around me, but because you had two two really good lines and the third and fourth lines weren't bad. So yeah, I often uh, and like yeah, like people... someone says, well, you're in that NHL. You like there's some skaters and players that are still around that are probably NHL quality players. They just didn't make yeah. it. I mean, there's a lot of players out there. That are Langer, I often say to people, well, first of all, that era, we could, each team had three or four up to five imports, some teams, uh, that's anybody from outside the island. But the other thing is there was all kinds of Newfoundlanders playing and goalies like or, or players like Jason Churchill or, I don't know, Morgan Warren or whoever it would be, these teams would fly them in. So not only were you flying imports in, but Newfoundlanders who could yeah, play. Yeah, well, Brad Dyke of- played with corner, but you guys, he, like yeah. I said, he was a – a Quebec major junior player, wasn't he? Really good player. Yeah. And then you have Ryan Muir. I think he got some records yeah. in, in Ontario Hockey League. So you had you had definitely good players coming in. Always. It, it wasn't easy. And I, I often look. I went out and played one year in the Alberta League, and the the way that you can one way I judge it, if you look and 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 there's a there's a weak team or two, and yeah. you're the leading scorer might have 24 games played. 90 points. Well, you know, okay, there's a little bit weaker, but those years, honestly, no one was getting two points a game. And it's funny, you talk about players that weren't noticed. Anybody in Western Newfoundland will know the legend of Mark Robinson. There are a few. There are a few other players that are like, wow, I can't believe it. But he was local. This guy's from Rocky Harbor, right? Yeah. Me, Harold Drukin had just retired. You were in the league, myself. Now there's three NHL players. Darren Colburn played. I mean, he was still in shape. He was ju- just back from playing a pro uh 69 goals twice in the east coast league in their hall of fame the second leading yeah, scorer yeah. ever he's playing in the league and mark robinson would outscore all of us oh yeah mark was good at every uh you know good skater yeah pass Big, shoot he do everything he was he was a talent i gotta think but so i mean you know him better than i do did he just not try to go away like i i find it hard to believe that a guy like that going away when he was coast. 15 or 16 yeah, I think he did go to East Coast for a little bit, and then he just quit and wanted to come back home or something, or something didn't work. Yeah, out. and it's tough to go to the. I saw, I saw that he he played like a few games in the Central League or the. But I mean, by that time. But like I said, he's definitely an AHL player, and once you get to the AHL level, you're just a, you know, a break or two away from the NHL level. Just uh, then, it's, then it's hard to stick there, but uh, that's the problem. Once you get there, it's hard to stick there for, you know, guys that you know are not. Yeah. Uh, Ollie skilled, Ollie motivated players to stay there. So you you know their goals. I mean, you were Ollie to the eighth overall, I think, and uh, it's just because you're eighth overall that don't mean you're st- no, sticking man. in the show. 
It's a mindset. You got to go. And speaking of all that, being around the room, mindset, practicing. I mean, you practiced for years with and played with, but I, I assume you didn't get out on Gretzky's line much, but you must have been practice. I mean, so no, you played. Uh, every now and then, obviously, you uh, yeah. fluke a shift with them or you get out there. But I remember one time in Washington, I think uh, I was behind the net and Gretz was in front, which is different. <laughs> He was screaming, and he got the squeaky voice sometimes. And then he told me, I'm in a bit later. What the fuck? I was right near you. <laughs> I said, Gretz, I didn't see him. Anyway, we kind of laughed at it after. <laughs> Were you guys still, I mean, I know you do some charity stuff. Do you guys still hang out here and there? Uh, no, I, well, I, I used to go to Gretzky's fancy camp down in Vegas, but then uh, we stopped that. But we still text every now and then, and I text someone, make fun of Dustin uh, playing golf and maybe a bit of Paulina. But, uh no, he's good. He always gets back to me anyway. Well, that's awesome. And what kind of uh, – without you don't have to spill the beans too much, but, I mean, you played with some great leaders. Messier was in uh, the Rangers for a big part of that time. I mean, coming from the Oilers, you had all kinds of leaders. I've often said at that time, Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, Steve Eisenman, there's three guys that would be great leaders whatever era they're in. But I know there must have been a difference. With Gretzky, was he really vocal, lead by example, or no. just one of the boys? No, uh, Messier was more the vocal one. Gretz just, you know, I guess with Messier there, Gretz just, you know, didn't really have to say much anyway because he, but I, I, I had them, but I, I just think about it. I had like Rod Bridnamore, Ron Francis, like I had some good, uh, yeah. good players, Marcus Naslin and those guys out in Vancouver. I mean, Luke Robitaille, I think, was my roommate, and a few like Peter Nedved. So I had a lot of good roommates, a lot of good uh, buddies, and a lot of Hall of Famers. Yeah, Brian Leach is a good buddy of mine. Like every time I go to New York, he wants to hook up uh, for a beer. But we got to go somewhere where there's not many Ranger fans. You don't like being seen. Oh. <laughs> now speaking of that, so what was a typical day in New York? Say, say it's. Tuesday, you don't play till Friday. Would you guys hit the bar? I mean, and what bar? Would no, you go to? I, well, I didn't let li leeching them uh, live down the city, and I'm pretty well just like sitting at a bar and having my few beers and not loud music. And so, you know, leechy is like that too. So every now and then I'll go down with leechy in the city. We'll have a couple of beer at a little dive on the, yeah. on the street, and then I'll jump on the train and go back home because. He's like, he's like that, too. He likes to sit down, just have a beer, listen to some music, lowly, not loud, so you can chit-chat. And... There's uh, That's good to hear. He's, he's uh, I'm not too there. wild. I'm not too wild to hear you. Not... Well, you got the bird. You like your beers. Yeah, you're not. Uh, I, I'm, I might stay back five, six days a week. You won't see me, but on the seventh day, I'm, I got glow <laughs> sticks in my mouth. I'm up on stage. I'm singing. I'm I'm definitely uh, what's the word? Probably club it a little more than you. Yes, but yeah. uh, I know I'm 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 that way more often. You're than a lot I. younger than me too, though. Eh, one of my six years. <laughs> we're all we we all end up in the same spot. NBA fans, it's time to bring the hoops action to the palm of your hand with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet five dollars and win two hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Plus. For a limited time, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, opt-in, and place a same-game parlay on any NBA game. And if it doesn't hit, you'll get a free bet back. So, what are you waiting for? Download the app now and sign up with the code THPN. New customers can bet $5 on the NBA and get $200 in free bets instantly. Again, that's code THPN, as in the Hockey Podcast Network, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. So speaking of that, bar scene, Laggers, you, you run a bar out there, Laggers. How long have you had that now? Uh, 25 years, I think. Holy fuck. I didn't realize that. Any yeah. major changes? The last time I was in there was pre Whew, I was in there with uh, our buddy Gibby and uh, a few more. Uh, God, when was I guess it was 2018, I suppose. It was a year or two before the pandemic. So much time. Oh, yeah. So you got live bands on the weekends. 
Pop Mostly on Friday, we got live bands or one man band and uh, sponsor the hockey team still. Uh, yeah, a little bit. It gives them a few beers after every game. That's all he wants. And so you're coaching now the Red Wings, right? Yeah. And you guys are about to go into the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I think we got a game or two left, but we're we got first clinch, so it's only three teams. Then we go and play the winner of St. John's, but uh, look, Cornbread and Porter Bass got to play a two or three, then the winner plays us. So for those who don't know, six teams in here, six team league in the East, three out West, and then uh, well, hopefully more soon. But uh, the pandemic kind of kicked everybody's ass. Now hockey's getting back going again in the format and all that. And this year, for the first time in a while, it's going to be West versus East. So I'm looking forward to that. What are the rules, though? I'm assuming you guys, uh, with less population and with uh, only three teams, you get a few pickups. I think and, you know, we've been rolling in here for years and years and years. You guys are a newer league. I think we should uh, get three or four. We probably need more. But, I mean, you pick up too many. Then the players that played all year are not going to get much ice time and they're going to get pissed off. So you you, you got to have a balance with it. I mean, they stuck around all year playing and uh, not fair for someone from the other team to come and play. And they're, but that said, to make it uh, to make it a little bit more competitive, like we said, they're like got a pretty good team there, but we probably need two or three, three or four to compete with the St. John's teams because yeah. Like I said, I think you're, you're on a level up, up, up. The first few, what, what's going to get you is that depth. Yeah. If you're, if you're fourth line, we could compete with the, the top two yeah. lines. Definitely. definitely can. Yeah. Um, so. Speaking of tough Langdon's, your your uh, cousin is it? I got in a few fights with Guy Langdon. Guy Langdon, yeah. Uh, and love him to death out there. I haven't talked to him much since. What does he do now? Uh, he's he's an electrician, so he he works around here at. Uh, so he's doing good. He don't play much hockey anymore, I don't think, which is good. I remember so, and to say, I mean, I've got maybe six, what, seven cousins combined, okay? Now, I recall you telling me this. We had a few beers. <laughs> and I, your dad and your mom are from a family of a dozen, right? No, I think, yeah, well, my Dad's family, I think, is 16 or 17. Like, uh, like they say 16, one, one passed away, uh, whatever. So 17 or so. So and my mom is 12 or 13, 11 or 12, something like that. Fuck, like, are they both from Deer Lake? Uh, yeah, pretty well. So I got legitimate uncles. It's pretty well almost 30 without any yeah. marriage or anything. So I got a lot of family on the go for sure. And are most of them out that way still? Uh, no, yeah. A lot moved to... Like every other family in Newfoundland, a lot of them are up Fort Mac now. And, uh, you know, they're almost probably retired now, but their kids are up there. So they stay up there. So I'd say mm-hmm. half and half, half, nah, probably, I'd say 60% in Deer Lake, around Deer Lake, Newfoundland, and 30 or 40 up in Fort Mac. And speaking of families, you so you've got four kids, I guess, triplets, which always triplets are 21 to- now and a 23 year old. Yep. Wow. Okay. Twenty two boys, two girls. I wanted a boy and a girl, and I got two and two. So, and pretty good. Did they follow in the footsteps and play hockey? Uh, no. Drew still plays hockey with the uh, with the Red Wings. Uh, I think he's a leading scorer in the league by yeah, nine points now. I think so. But uh, yeah, he was he was going to go away play maritime junior which i done and he didn't really want to stay and he had a bad knee and i who was coach danton mike danton just came on as coach yeah yeah I played said, at st mary's played in st louis too. yeah and i said i kind of said to dan uh, drew got a bad knee we got uh he's not gonna do much for and then i had him seen him uh running steps they made him run steps i said drew get the freak out of there and then anyway not that I know Danton at all, but anyway, it was a kind of a shit show up there after that, they said. So I'm glad he didn't go that way. And ah, he's fuck he's, being back here. He's happy. That's the main thing. Langer, yeah. one question about roller hockey. I just want to know how oh, you, yeah, yeah. you played it. For those that don't know, the Roller Hockey International was this awesome league that was on the go in the 90s. I really don't know how it bottomed out because it really was on its way. Oh, it was on ESPN. It was on ESPN. It was, on ESPN. Oh, yeah. it was sold out. I saw Darren Colburn won the world championship one year with most guys from that league in Anaheim, sold out. Um, so how did you – most teams were in 
obviously for I, some teams played outdoors. Yeah. So it was most Sunbelt places. How did you get down there? And where'd you play? Anaheim. Anaheim yeah. Bullfrogs, which Grant Sanye, which yeah. I think is a scout with Tampa now. He was my coach in Summerside. Yeah. Capitals. Uh, and he was down there a couple of years. Anyway, uh, I had agent in Tom Leila, and he said, uh, why don't you go down to Hanai and uh, play roller hockey to get in shape for the NHL? Uh, well, he recommended it. I thought you did. I figured they wouldn't want you doing that. Oh, no, wow. they said it keep you in shape. Man. Anyway, it was it didn't keep me in shape. You're in California around Hanai, and it's a uh, anyway. Yeah. So I came back to Ranger Camp, and um, I don't know if you ever done this, but if you're on rollerblades all summer and you try to skate, not good. Oh my God, I'm a bad enough. Sk- I, I literally had to hold on to the boards. Like, I'm serious. And it's in New York, and it's not like anywhere else. Well, Toronto, Montreal. You got a shitload of media out there, like a shitload. Yeah. And I, I couldn't skate. You, like, you I couldn't seriously skate. skate. Oh, it was I, know it. I know the feeling. I just usually. Because uh, Roll Rocky does the big turn and the oh. same thing with the. So you get on the ice, you can't turn. You can't. Oh, my God. That was. And I mean, with if the knock, trust like me. Like most people would came home, found ice somewhere, and said, "Oh, we'd get on the ice a couple of times before camp." But no, not stupid me. That's what I figured. I'm like, <laughs> you know, usually you get that out of your legs a week before, at least one week before. Yeah, yeah that must have been fucking terrifying. But for yeah, those that I, don't know, it really is. It feels that going from skating to roller, you kind of get used to it, but you don't realize skating roller is not bad. The other way around yeah, is the other way around, especially if you're at NHL yeah. camp. So you went down. Was there fighting? Yeah, probably a couple times, yeah, but I, I didn't fight much. Four on four, no, four on four, wide open. I mean, I loved watching those games. I was hoping it's going to catch on. And... Yeah, yeah. No, and they had some good cities too. So that was the end. So did you, and you didn't go back. You figured, fuck it. I mean, it's it, to me. Yeah, it wouldn't be getting me in shape drinking beers in the summer in California after. Rather easy hockey games. I don't want to say easy. Yeah, no, yeah, it's not a not a good place to get in shape. Okay, so your jersey just got retired. We're almost done, by the way. Um, yeah. um Your jersey just got retired in Deer Lake. Did you know that was coming? Uh, yeah, kind of. Like they've done a couple of things before, but nothing. Uh, you know, you had the name up Olmos Airline, and then they had a jersey up, but not a jersey. But they didn't really have a ceremony, so. My son Brett uh, got on town council. He uh, he's a council member now. So uh, is he really? <laughs> I guess I guess he was the one who made it happen more. Uh, more he's or less. a council member, so you were going to get into politics one year. I remember that. Well, not really. Somebody kind of wanted me to run, and I didn't really want to. And then then the the kind of the membership around here, the PC, has got got a couple more guys to go against me and wanted this guy in so they all voted different people so nice. i lost out by a few but i'm glad it uh, worked out the way it did because i didn't want to be in politician politics i uh i ran twice i mean you can't say time. nothing you can't say shit everything is wrong and scrutinized so, man yeah oh, i know right. and i all the power to him i mean it takes takes a certain type of person to have to put up with that all the time I all mean, the time, right? And you got to be available. It's funny, just even when I ran, you don't know I which friend up. you could have because that friend might have a company. You know, like, who yeah. cares? It's a I know people are crazy crazy world, people man, up, to but... navigate around. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, I know people. Back. Some people are corrupt. I mean, ninety-nine percent of the people are not. But you got that one percent that are. That's with everything. Cops, doctors. I mean, there's crazy people everywhere. That's a good point. Okay, a few more quick questions. Langer, you're on death row. What would you pick? What's your last meal? Uh, steak. Prime rib. Nice prime rib. Prime rib. And anything with it? No. Mashed, mashed potato. potato. What do I look like? I'm a mashed potato, prime rib, and a box of red wine. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> uh, actually, I could have figured. Only until recently, though. I didn't realize you were a wine drinker until one of those charities. I wasn't. That's a story. Uh, like I said, I drank beer on my whole life pretty well. And I used to be with Ron Francis and Gretz, and they all there drink wine by him. Anyway, I used, uh, I started though one year. I just said fuck it, I'm gonna try it. And I have a taste of wine, then I chug it down with beer. Taste wine, chug it with beer, and then eventually I just got on um, wine. I've never been off since. It is uh, healthier too. Oh yeah, good one. 
So we were <laughs> we, a glass we or two a day. Two another. weeks ago, three weeks ago, with some NHL alumni, I was in the car with you and Ron Duguay. I always wanted to meet Ron Duguay, and it was a wild time. How do you know Ron? Obviously, he played in New York, but I mean that was before you. How do you know him? From doing events? Yeah, we're mostly uh, doing events and doing events like we just end up the Maritimes, but I see him uh, quite a bit down in uh, New York when I go. I usually go two or three times a year with the Rangers alumni, but uh, I haven't been down since November now, so I got to get on that because that's nice trips. Time's coming. Well, I mean, the closer it gets to playoffs, the timing couldn't be better. They're, they're yeah. going to be a contender for the Cup. Um, yeah, well, that's it. I had all these contenders for the Cup. Uh, I mean, they got to play each other in the first round, so <laughs> half know, the teams right? are not going to be six, contenders. The top six teams all from the East, and they all loaded up, and yeah. they're going to half of them are going to be gone immediately, uh, which is wild. Uh, so, okay, you're traveling. Let's say you're going on a <sighs> excursion in the uh, it's camping, right? You're taking a skidoo. You're going, uh, let's say, across. Uh, Skidoo across Newfoundland in the winter, except you got to bring someone to cook. One of your ex teammates has to be the chef. Let's say it's going to take four or five days. You're going to take your time. You're going to camp out. You're going to ice fish, whatever, but you only got one person to do the cooking. Who would that chef be? Uh, I don't know. Todd Harvey, I guess. Do you still talk to Todd? I met him. Not really. Every now and then, like a couple times a year, probably, or give him a text every now and then, but. Like you said, when you're gone away for so long, you just don't keep in touch. But if I do go to Toronto, I'll give them a text, and maybe we'll meet up for a Blue Jays game or something this summer. It's a good Say guy. That every summer. We but I want to go out and check time. out the new Sky Dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New uh, renovations. I can't wait to see that. It's supposed to be yeah. the best deck in Toronto. No, That's what perfect. they say. Um, yeah, he, we were playing against you guys in exhibition, and he just wheeled up. I was playing left wing. He was right. I knew he fought. I, I didn't realize he was looking for it because he'd been in the NHL for a few years. But he said, uh, hey, man, he goes, I'm having a shitty camp. He goes, I got relatives from Newfoundland. I thought he said his parents. But anyway, yeah, it just uh, like, what? I think and, his wife's parents. So, yeah. okay, that's it. I knew it was something. Yeah. And he goes, hey, you want to go? And he said it with a grin on his face. And I was like, yeah, sure. We had a great fight. Uh, and yeah. once in a while, I do come across him. We, he did a couple of those charity things a few years ago yeah yeah um if you on the same trip now you got to go across this time you're on a safari in africa in the jungle and you're seeing the animals and you're going to take two weeks round trip one person to do the music who would that be that you played with got to be a teammate oh i'm not really a music guy but uh well, you got to be. You got Langers. You got that line. Yeah, thing. I know, but I just like they said, play a bit of I, I like to just play a mellow music. Like, yes, I might be a tough guy, but I don't mind, uh, you know, Whitney Houston, people like that. <laughs> I see. I always wondered. Yeah, I haven't seen you. You never really take the wheel when we're uh, playing No, music. but I, yeah, I wouldn't even know what, uh, who would be the DJ, but they probably got to like country and the slow music. What would you guys listen to? Like when I say Leach, he, Brian room? Leach is probably something like that because he don't seem like a heavy metal kind of guy either. Uh, you got to pick one teammate now. It's the World Cup. Canada gets in the final, and hypothetically in this world, you got to pick one teammate to take a shot and win it. Of course, not play the whole game. It's soccer, but you, anybody can kick the ball and score. No, not anybody. But who would you put your money on? What ex teammate? Like who got the best shot or who would take who the penalty shot? Think, who would you think? You got a million <laughs> bucks in the middle. If he misses, no problem. It's no sweat off your back. But if he scores, you're going to get a million dollars. Who would you take? Who would you pick to take that shot that was one of your teammates? He's shooting on a World Cup goalie. Yeah. I would say I would say Alex Kovalev is probably one of the most skilled guys i ever seen. And a lot of people say that. Uh, but – one of the best shots uh, I seen too, which a lot of people probably Michael Ryder from Newfoundland got a yeah. unbelievable shot. But uh, if you had to go, uh, Kovalev probably would be mine. Ryder, yeah, he does his he shot. He got a great shot. It's incredible. I heard he's good at golf. You ever golf with him? No. Yeah, maybe. I can't. Remember. Yes, probably. <laughs> like, are you a big golfer? I see you. I, I do now a bit. Uh, couple of times a week but uh down the resort or you know once we got a 901 air which is nice but uh yeah i could be half decent sometimes i could be shit the next time so what like about every, like everybody what about fishing 
Fishing, no. I don't do much fishing. Hunting? No. I got a moose license, but I got a partner, so my partner usually gets it. If you were to – okay, so your partner gets the moose, and then you how long – you got a big family. How long would that meat do you? Oh, yeah. I'd say we might have a fro- – I, I give away a lot of it, but I still got moose in there from a year or two ago. But uh, once a month maybe, or I might make a moose stew or, you know, a moose fry. I love moose stew. Yeah. Love it. This is my favorite. I know it's supposed to be the healthiest. I don't really know the nutrition facts. I, I always I haven't looked it up, but I love moose. Just love it. It's my favorite red yeah. meat there is. Well, next time you're in this way, which you don't come in much anymore, you will have to do a moose. Come, moose or a moose coming in the end of May. Oh. 100%, 100% coming in the end of May. I'm taking my daughter in, and uh, she's going to see the sights and sounds in Cornerbrook. The weather will just be getting nice. Oh, yeah. I'll have a Perfect. few nights on my own. Maybe I'll come down to Langer's. Sounds like a plan. Well, let's leave it right there. It's as good a place to leave it as anything. Thank you, Darren. Do you have anything else to promote? You got your nope. bar langers. What no, else you got? No, just langers. And thanks for having me on. And uh, uh, not say not that I listen to your podcast much, but I get uh, I see that uh, a lot of people do like it. I'm not a podcast listener guy. I, I don't. You don't strike me as a podcast listener. You no. are. You know what? You've heard. And all people my said if you're driving across Newfoundland, which I haven't done much, he said put on a podcast. But I don't even think about it. I put on. Uh, I'll rent a book from James uh, D- John Grissom or something like that, and uh, I'll listen that to the book. That blew me away. Yeah, because I asked you, like, what albums do you? You're like, no, I don't I don't really listen to music on the way in. No. I'm not a podcast guy. Books on tape is the fucking last thing I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I know. It really is. But, hey. and, but last question. Last question. I always wanted to know this. When you were going down to New York, were you flying or were you driving your rig? Uh, I would... Yeah, for camp, I would at the end of the year I would drive home and drive back. Yeah. Okay, because it is a nice drive in the spring or in the fall. It's a nice, nice drive. Oh yeah, it's not yeah. too far. And I drove, people... to, I drove to Carolina also, and so every year at the end of the year I would drive. Not, the wife might drive back, especially when we had kids. They would fly, and I would drive or get one of my buddies to come down and drive back with me. And in your bar right now, last question: What would be? Um, it's a it's a bad question. What would be your most prized possession from hockey? I guess it doesn't have anything to do with the burr. I, I assume I, don't know. Still I, got, I got Gretz's Gretz. last game stick, so there's only fifty one of those, I think. So okay. that's that's pretty uh pretty cool to have. And a couple more things from Gretz and Hey. I had Rick Gretz, Gretz, last and fucking and stick. That's enough said. That yeah, right there yeah, is yeah. Trump card. That would probably be the most important thing in the Newfoundland Hockey Hall of Fame, and it's sitting in your bar. Speaking of that, congrats. Well, it's sitting in my basement now. When I a place next to the bar was on fire, and they thought Langers was going, I sent me and the fireman went in. All I wanted, make sure I get that Gretzky stick, and we got it. Fucking right. It's good and for you. I haven't you. put it up since. Okay, well, listen, uh, that's a great decision and uh, an awesome story. Glad you guys are still friends. I uh, appreciate you coming on today. I will probably see you in March. I'm not really sure. If not, it'll be May, and I don't golf much, but I love the Humber Resort Golf Course, so maybe we can get out on the links. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jerry. Have a good day. Thanks, brother. See you soon. See you now. Okay, folks, there you have it. There there you have it. Get the marbles out of your mouth, T-Bone. Uh, Darren Langdon. I always wanted to have Langer on, and um, I could have talked to Langer. 521 games played, one of the most established careers, fighting or not. You know, Langer can score any year that he didn't just get one shift uh, or two shifts like those NHL years. You look at those stats, right? You base those on penalty minutes because that's what he was there to do. But if Langer had any ice time whatsoever, he could bury. Like I said, seven goals is not a bad rookie year for anybody. I would have been happy with that as a first round pick coming in, right? His first year in the show clearly got some time, not much, still fourth line, but he potted in seven, came back home here to senior hockey, always a point of game player in a very underrated senior league. As we talked about um, those years in PEI, he had 78 and 83 points respectively, along with hundreds and hundreds of penalty minutes, nearly a thousand. So uh, Langer, and I know what he says. Yeah. Langer, is nothing. He doesn't look like the most fluid, finesse, smooth hockey player, but always makes the right, not always, most of the time makes the right decision. Hard to knock off the puck. Good shot. 
not great, but accurate. And, uh, yeah, we fought a couple times. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was a blur for me, and it was a little bit... Uh, Langer was in control the whole time. I was happy I didn't go down, but he was in control. I think one of them might be on YouTube somewhere. They put it on CBC. I remember they were there to do a documentary on Langer coming back and playing some of the lockout the year he was in New Jersey in senior hockey. And we, uh, yeah, we had a couple fights that year. But I, uh, Langer and I are friends. There's uh, when I say we got in fights, it was it was hockey, and it wasn't the Newfoundland Senior League. Isn't like the Quebec Semi Pro League where there's all kinds of fighting. It's not a planned fight. I mean, each team had a tough guy or two. But in senior, yeah, a whole year might go by. You know, I might get in one or two. I don't remember getting in more than five fights in any senior hockey league year. I remember a couple of years with none. So it's not this headhunter league. But it, it's it's a paid league, especially then. Uh and it's a competitive league, and we will be playing not only for the Herder, but to go to the Allen Cup. So it's paid and it's competitive enough said, right? You're going to get people dropping the gloves uh, when, when shit happens. But it wasn't one of these things, the game starts and who's fighting who. It ever wasn't that. We had some great battles, but a lot, a lot of the games, just exactly that. Battles, uh, hits. Maybe the odd misconduct, but it wasn't always fights. But Langer, it's it's hard for Langer to play without getting in. I mean, he's just that guy. He's tough. Everybody knows it. I knew it. I mean, even I didn't want to fight Langer, but I believe he like hit the goalie or something. It might have been even by accident. But I mean, I'm playing for Cornerbrook. I had to stick up for my team too, and uh, it was just one of those things. But uh, you know, practiced, played for practiced every day and played games with Wayne Gretzky. So you could do a podcast just on that, really. Uh, and, you know, they're still really good buddies. Gretzky keeps in touch. Says a lot for him. Says a lot for both of them. For me, the rest of the week, for you Shorzy fans, or the rest of the month, it's, what's it now? It's March 2nd, my, uh, Penny Lane's birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday, Penny Lane. Uh, but I'll be leaving in a few weeks. We're going to go to Sudbury. We're going to get season two in the bag by May. I told Langer late May because I'll be done shooting by then. And uh, for all you Shorzy fans, I'm really looking forward to it. As far as spitting chiclets, I get a lot of emails and texts on that. I told the boys I'm always available for them. And uh, I got a text from Grinelli yesterday saying that I'll probably be on the show soon. I get a lot of questions uh, from you guys about when we're going to do a Chicklets Cup. I, listen, I really don't know. I'm the last one to find out about that. I always make it a priority. If I'm not shooting Shorzy, I'm there. It's priority number one. Well, you know, outside of family and stuff. And uh, so I really don't have any news. I know they were thinking about the Calgary Stampede. That would be a nice venue, but I really, really don't know, guys. Chicklets boys are real good friends of mine. I'm happy to be part of the universe, but, uh, you know, I answer the bell when called upon. Other than that, I have no say whatsoever in the decision-making process. But uh, they're great people, and I talk to them frequently. And at the very least, I'll see R.A. in Sudbury in uh, in just a few weeks because he's uh, obviously, you guys know, part of the show as well. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, this week, you know what? I don't really have, uh, I didn't recommend much music the other day, but I got a friend, Matthew Meinzer. Is that how you say it? Meinzer. He plays in the southernmost, or he lives in. It's this one of the most, here, one sec. I got to look this up. I got to look this up. Matthew... Meinzer. M-E-I-N-Z-E-R. I hope I'm saying that right, Matt. Um, Matt is a... Hold on now. Am I... Am I seeing this right? Uh, 
Argentina. I'm not sure how, I think it's Ushua. Am I saying that right? Anyway, it's apparently one of the most unique places to have hockey in the world. I, th I think it's the southernmost um, hockey rink. I could be wrong. Anyway, look, check it out. Matt 99, M A T T, number nine, and then N I N E on my Instagram. I might have him on here sometime. It's an interesting story. He's from, I believe, New England uh, and moved over there and has a decent hockey program going where hockey didn't exist before. It's an interesting, he doesn't have a lot of followers, but it's very interesting. Check him out. And, uh, he sent me a message. He likes, he's a loyal listener. He's been listening for a long time. And uh, he said, maybe for music, you can bring up John Prine and Gordon Lightfoot. Now, I love, love, love both artists. Gordon Lightfoot is Canadian. John Prine is one of my favorites. I've often mentioned that. I think I did a little blurb on him when he died a couple years ago. Oh, God. So my favorite Gordon Lightfoot songs are Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, Summer Side of Life, I would say. There's a couple. Um, Rainy Day People. Let's just go there. And for John Prine, my favorite John Prine song is not one of his most popular. It's Pitcher Show. And number two would be Sam Stone. But uh, get ready to shed a tear. It's a very poignant Um words that lyrics that create and uh, the imagery created is uh it'll shake you sam stone it's about a heroin addict who came back from the war a beautiful song angel of montgomery what else uh what's one of my other favorite john prine songs i suppose um Jesus, The Missing Years. There you go. That's off uh, the album. is called The Missing Years. It's a different song. And I know there's Prime fans out there that are going, what? Because he's got a lot more popular. But I love it. It's, uh, it's exactly that. It's the story of Jesus and what he sees as The Missing Years. So, Matthew, thanks for listening. Good luck. Maybe have you on the show soon. Um, I don't bring up Gordon Lightfoot much or John Prine. To be honest, because I, I always assume that everybody kind of knows those people already, but I assume too much. I know that because uh, we're moving away from singer-songwriters, classic rock kind of thing, and moving into a more EDM slash hip-hop infused world. Uh, you're always going to find all genres of music. I'm just saying with the the pop culture right now, where it's at, the top 40, all that stuff, I would think you could go with, and, and I, I wouldn't be out on a limb to say that hip-hop probably rules, right? I don't mind hip-hop. It's not my favorite, but I don't mind it. And uh, most things, styles, whether it's clothes, music, I find can often, often be cyclical anyway, right? So hey, if you want to find good music of any genre, it's out there, trust me. Uh, and every once in a while I'll get a message like that from Matt talking about Gordon Lightfoot or John Prine. And I just think, doesn't everybody know those guys? But I think maybe they don't anymore. So I just recommended three songs from each, but really it, it, uh, those are two artists that if you don't know who I'm talking about or who Matt's talking about, um, do yourselves a favor and look into it. These are artists that it, it's, they require a deep dive, like a Bob Dylan type deep dive. They've got a lot of stuff out there. And uh, I don't know of one album by either that I don't like some more popular than others. So let's say, check out their greatest hits, even Lightfoot though, volume one and two and uh, John Prine. <clears throat> it's tough to talk about because he didn't, when it comes to hits, because he wasn't really a hit maker. He made some, but he was known for his lyrics, his songwriting, his albums, kind of like Lightfoot.
Just go check them both out. Trust me. If it, if it's one song, make or break you, listen to The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Lightfoot. And like I said, uh, Pitcher Show by John Prine. Those are my two favorites. Thank you to Darren Langdon. Langer, as they call him, Langer 24, was just inducted into the Newfoundland and Labrador Hockey Hall of Fame and also has his number now retired, never to be worn again by the Deer Lake Red Wings. That just happened a month ago. Thank you for Langer. Thank you, Langer. Sorry, thank you for showing up today on the program. I know a lot of you were, uh, were waiting for that. I've teased it for years, just the timing never worked out. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And, of course, if you're downtown St. John's this weekend and you want to have a beer, why not check out the Bull and Barrel, TJ's Pub, Rob Roy Confusion, Martini Bar, Green Sleeves Pub, and, of course, the Bull and Barrel. If you're going to go for a bite to eat, why not go to the Merchant Tavern, Blue on Water, or Wedgwood Cafe? Pitbull Pain Relief Sticks, I swear by them. Pitbullpainrelief.com. Check it out. See what all the fuss is about. If you're going to work out, Ryan Power Power Conditioning, strength and balance for the body and mind on Rope Walk Lane. You were due for this yesterday. Check it out. And, of course, Mr. Lube, two locations right here in St. John's, Torbay Road and Cam Mount Road. Live, laugh, lube. True hockey, take what's yours. Folks, thanks. This has been episode 144B featuring one of the best hockey players to ever come from the island, Darren Langdon. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, folks. I'll be back in just a few days with another rollicking episode of Tales with TR. Catch you on the rebound.